Let's welcome in our co-hosts, New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap, Mr. Good, Gilstrap. Good morning. And that sniffle you heard, I think, came from Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Was that no, Tim? No, that was me. Was Tim? Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. You got the sniffles today. <laughs> Sorry, I thought dude. maybe Matt had allergies today. <laughs> no, sir. Oh, well, I, I'm feeling good. This rain's got all the pollens tamped down. Feeling our aquifers. It's good. That's a good word, aquifer. You don't get that on this show that often. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the first time, in fact. <laughs> It's not a big word. And yet an uncommon one. We have a professional wordsmith sitting to my left. Well, I'm he, sure he's used bigger words than aquifer. Uh, and it's not necessarily a big word, but like it's a, a, it's an uncommon word. It's like an a, important word. Like a murderfer. He's very made up some murderfer. Is that a word? Murderfer? No, I don't I don't think so. But Mur- speaking murder of for hire. Speaking yeah. of important words and wordsmiths and such, I, I want to take a moment to um, Give my regards to the DeMille family. Uh, Nelson DeMille is one of the was. He just passed away on Tuesday. Uh, Nelson DeMille was a friend of mine. He was one of the stars of the uh, of the thriller world. He he <clears throat> without without his early works with the, like the Charm School, I think was was his first um, uh, big breakthrough thriller. He created, in my view, he created the, 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 the modern thrill, and he's, he's written God knows how many bestsellers since then. He was a great guy. He was uh, very helpful to new writers. He actually uh, wrote Word of Honor, which was the first screenplay that I was paid to write. Um, he, he, just, he was really, really a fine man and a terrific writer, and he passed away on Tuesday, and the world lost a good one. Was he related to Cecil B. DeMille? I anyone? don't know. I never asked. I don't think so, but I don't know. Well, sorry for your loss of your friend. Thank you. Let's welcome in our first guest of the day, Pastor Tim Garino, who probably has the appropriate words in a situation like this when somebody's lost a friend. What do you say to a person to soothe them in a moment of need like that, Tim? Well, sometimes it's not what you say. It's just the be there. And, and, uh, um, or just as you just did, you gave them honor. Uh, sometimes that's the best way to do it. Um, and I... I uh, lost some friends just recently, and uh, to, I just showed up and uh, and just be there and uh, pay them honor like you just did. That sometimes that's the best thing to do because uh, um, no matter what you say, they're they're hurting, mm-hmm. and uh, so just to be there, pay them honor, respect that kind of stuff is the best. Some of the best funerals I've had is uh, um, I get uh, it's, I, I ask people. Um, relatives, family, I say to them, hey, give me stuff that was funny, humorous, or something you'll remember, you know, 10 years from now that, that from this person. And then I put that in my messages. And it makes people, uh, it, it just really drives things home, just like you just said. Mm-hmm. You gave them honor. You spoke well of them. Uh, that's what people are going to remember. You know, not, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I, it's when people say, I, I'm sorry, you know, stuff like that. That's typical, but it's those kind of things that people remember that what you spoke of them and spoke well. Good stuff. Thank so, yeah, you. so that's, that's the way I usually do it like that. You are in your seat with uh, some tickets yes. to go see WVU play football. Hey, let me read this here real quick to you, real quick. And it's the word of the day, Proverbs 19:17. And I'm sure you've heard this. He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. That's out of Proverbs. Proverbs is a great book. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would, I would, we're blessed at the mission and. Um, you guys, I, I read that because you guys do so much in this community, and you reach out, and you, each one of you has had roles, and uh, Dylan back there that's doing the, the show and everything. Well, uh, that's Colin today. Colin, actually, I'm yeah, sorry, sorry, Colin Dylan back there doing earlier this, in the week. Yeah, yeah, that Colin back there, I get them all mixed up, but uh, you guys do such a great job. And then Mr. Hornby uh, texted me on Sunday, I think it was, and said, "Hey, um, would you uh, want tickets to the WVU football game?" I said, "Sure." And he said, you know, you can auction them off or, or whatever. And I said, no. I said, you know, it would be great for our guys to go. Our guys never get these kind of chances. For uh, There's six tickets, and the six guys we chose are in leadership at the mission. They've been there a long time. They've been clean and sober. Um, they came up through the program. They're doing well. Um, and we're going to bless them with these six tickets. Um, they're going to get a chance to go. Uh, for our guys, that's – I mean – they're going to be like little kids showing up in the football game they've never been before. Um, 
I've never been before, but I'm not taking the tickets from them because that, that's just not the way we do things. And so Mr. Hornby and, and this radio station here is blessing us with six tickets. Um, so we're, we're going to send the guys out Saturday to the uh, WVU Kansas game. Hope WVU actually wins. <laughs> I mean, nice. They're due. <laughs> yeah, they're due. <laughs> they're don't due. don't they, hold your breath. They, they lost the pit. Dude. That was yeah, a tough did. game. That was a tough game. And I've done a very good job of not rubbing it in on, gonna, on Colin say, for picking <laughs> against my team. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, so we're. I'm just very thankful. Things like this and how this community has blessed us as a mission. Something like this is 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 so neat. Um, we had somebody recently also give us some tickets to the um, – uh, box car game uh, game, and we took uh, we took I I forget how many guys to the box car game there in Hagerstown in Hagerstown, yeah. and they loved it. I talked to each one of them, and it was you know for some of these guys that was the first uh, any kind of major league or minor league ball game they've ever seen. So um, it, it's it's really neat to do something like this, and I'm going to thank uh, Mr. Hornby and and uh, WRNR here for doing that, and you guys. For the for what you do in the community and and the love, I mean, our guys are going to be like little kids going to this game. They're going to love it. That's it's awesome. going to be great. So we chose six guys that have been a blessing to us at the mission. Has really gone above and beyond. So it's going to be exciting. I mean, I wish I could be there. I'm not going to be there because then I'd take a ticket. And so we're going to send these guys. And we got one of our guys as a driver, and he he's one of our uh, guys come up through the program, and he's going to drive them there and drive them back. Um, he's excited. He's a big WVU fan. Uh, I know he's never been to one of these games, so he's pumped. He can't wait. <laughs> he's going to walk in the stadium, and they're just going to have a blast. It's like Christmas morning, man. That's yeah, awesome. it's going to be great. And talking about Christmas and Thanksgiving, it's coming up at the Mission. Yeah, Sunday is the first day of fall. Yeah, it's coming fast. And, uh, you know, uh, last month we were over 10,000 meals. This month we're probably going to be over 10,000 meals again. Um and and Thanksgiving's coming up, and then Christmas is coming up. So there's a lot going on at the mission. Um, we have a lot of good things through the Give a Smile uh, Foundation. I wanted to update you on that. That has really gone well. Dr. Uh, Lisa and, and Buzz Poland, who blessed us with the foundation, and then uh, the Good Samaritan uh, Free Health Clinic came along and gave us um, some extra money for that. We've been able to help a lot of men, women. Uh, in fact, we're going to help another. Uh, uh, a lady that's in our uh, Haven house with her teeth, and it's uh, it's just neat to see folks go from no smile and, and bad teeth and, and just a lot of pain to a uh, beautiful smile. They're smiling all the time, and you can see their, their whole attitude changes, their personality sure. changes. Uh, they want to get back out there, get jobs, do stuff. Um, so because of that foundation, and we got coin boxes all over the place, we're able to put smiles on people's face, take pain out of them. You know, those abscesses are real bad. A lot of our folks have abscess because their teeth have been bad for so long. That's a lot of pain. People die from it. We had a guy way back when during COVID die from an abscess. Um, it exploded and went throughout his body and killed him. Um, a lot of, lot, of, lot of stuff goes on at the mission. Um, we're just so thankful for that. And uh, before I go on, do you guys have any questions? Because a lot of times I do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> and I know any any questions about the mission and what we do there. You're an interviewer's dream. Okay. Yeah. You know, you just kind of <laughs> tee it up and, okay. and you go. I'm just trying to imagine living with an abscessed tooth. Yeah. I've had an abscessed tooth, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's the thing that has to come out of your head now. Yeah. it's Some of them live with it for months. Some of them live with it longer than that. And when they come to us, it's so bad because they get clean and sober, so they don't, they're not using the drugs or, or the alcohol to deaden the pain. Now they're clean and sober, and it gets even worse to deal with. So we get them in. We have a lady by the name of Colette. She's one of the nurses at the uh, uh, Shenandoah uh, Clinic here in town, and she gets us into smiles and a bunch of other things right away. She's a, she's a, uh, And then there's uh, Shelly and Donna, uh, who are two ladies at our uh, front desk who are volunteers. And um, they do a wonderful job in helping them get dental appointments and all that stuff. And they're just angels. They get them in right away, get it going. Um, there's a lot of red tape, and they bust through that red tape. Those, the, those ladies know how to talk to people and just knock those doors down and get in there. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm Italian, so I'm not the kind of guy that gets on the phone. Right here, baby. <laughs> and somebody says no to me. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I got to, here, you, you ladies take care of it. They speak um, 
uh, nicer, <laughs> but, but they're but they're persistent. So they they they, they keep knocking until the door opens. So that's expensive work. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very expensive work. Most of the time, when we help somebody with their mouth and everything, it's a couple thousand dollars. By the time everything's pulled and everything's replaced and put back in, it, it can be a couple thousand dollars. And how do people enter the program? Um, well, we take probably the I hate to say it the worst first, and get it and get it taken care of before it gets any worse. And um, so it just depends on their situation. Are these people who wander in? No, no, no. These are people in our program. There are people that are in our program, stay with us, live with us, work either w uh, with us or they work a job outside. All, all, the, all the ladies that um, have families at the Haven House, that's the homeless um, temporary uh, shelter for uh, transitional for families. Uh, every, uh, well, right now it's single mom and kids in every apartment. Every one of those ladies have a job. And one ha one has a job and going to school full time, uh, the others have a job. Another one has uh, two jobs, and raise their family. And so when they have dental problems, uh, either with the kids or themselves, with with the adults we run through Colette. With the kids we run them through um, the program that uh, Dr. Lisa uh, set up years ago. Dr. Lisa um, and I don't know all of her resume. You can talk to her or, or Buzz. Um, Dr. Lisa set up a program with WVU, ran it for like 30-some 30, 30 years with the kids in the schools here in Berkeley County. She set that up years ago, and she gave us a lot of she, – she, she is a, a miracle worker. She gave us a lot of great information when we started this foundation that really opened up doors for us to get a lot of our folks help and, and, and the need they, uh, for, the medic, uh, for their teeth the med to Medicaid and – uh, all the different stuff. She really opened up some huge, uh, her and her husband, uh, Buzz, opened up some huge doors for us. Uh, Joseph Bowers, a uh, guy you might want to interview for one of your books, <laughs> what he does for a living, he opened that door. He introduced me to them. He's their neighbor. He's a supporter of the mission, a veteran, a um, couple other things he does. Um, but uh, uh, he in he introduced me to them, and, and what a blessing. It, it, it just The doors open. We're able to help people because that's painful dealing with teeth. You guys know that. I Is mean, preventive care part of it? Uh, we try to do the best we can with that, um, and, and get them set up in that situation once they get taken care of. Um, one of our guys, Lenny, um, who's uh, he just was on. He helps out a lot. He helps with um, K. He goes every Friday to horses with with uh, hearts. With hearts. Yeah. Is that the mm. the guy Matt and his wife? Yes. Meet with. Yeah. Right. That's guy. He he we did his mouth and everything too and he he was in real bad shape and now he uh it's, it's such a blessing it's totally different he smiles now before he wouldn't smile he smiles now uh, he talks um it's it's just uh dealing with it, it, i i deal with a lot of hurting people for example we uh, we had a guy a couple of weeks back come to us through uh mountaineer and that's now a pyramid come to us uh, he was there um, for a drug overdose, um, came to us a couple of days later. He got a phone call from the hospital. His uh, mother uh, overdosed. Um, two days later, they pulled the plug. We deal with all kinds of stuff, mm. and it's 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 uh, it, it's hard to see the pain. Uh, but when we can bring some healing and and some change to it, um, every little bit matters. Whether it's teeth, it's um, as you're saying. What do you say to a situation like that? Um, being there, being a place for him, uh, helping him get to what he needs to get to to see uh, the service and all that kind of stuff. It, it, it we we deal with so many things that come at us daily, but it's neat to see, you know, people get help. Things like this. Little things like this. I mean, to you guys, it might not mean anything because you you have access to go to a game like this. But to our guys, this this like you said, it's like Christmas. I mean, this is this is huge. I mean, some of these guys, this would probably be the only football game they ever get to see like this, um, and and it, they'll never forget it. I mean, it, it's it's awesome. And this is the kind of stuff that we just thank the Lord for. We thank um, you guys for. Um, we thank the opportunity in this community, which is such a great community. We get out and volunteer. We get out and do things for the community as much as we can. We had the Air Guard 
there, there just recently. It was really neat. And a lot of the top officials from the Air Guard came. They put in rose beds. They helped out in the kitchen. Uh, they helped out in our thrift store. They helped out in our warehouse. And these guys, man, they're efficient. When they do stuff, <laughs> I was like, man, this is awesome. You didn't have to worry about clean up. They, they had it all cleaned up. They swept it all up, had everything on. I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. And then the Coast Guard, I think, was there yesterday. Uh, I wasn't there yesterday. I, I was uh, doing a lot of meetings and out. The Coast Guard was there yesterday. I mean, it's just uh, really neat to see all the people coming in. Um, I, I think we got we got all kind of groups coming in in the next couple of weeks. But it's just neat to see that and how the community reaches out and does things. Because um, we deal, it's tough. We deal with a lot of not so good things and then we deal with a lot of great things and we see a lot of people's lives change there's steve who came to us about a year ago yeah september 15th yeah it's past september 15th sure is. <laughs> it's true uh he's a year sober now him and his brother were living behind dunkin donuts on edwin edwin miller boulevard uh alcoholics um down and out really bad situation they're basically killing themselves with what they were doing he came to us about a year ago doing really well has a uh, hard worker good painter type of worker that kind of guy labor type guy but has a, a low reading level and when he came to us uh, he wanted a Bible we gave him a Bible but it's your regular King James Bible it's hard to read so he came to us and said hey uh, you know, he. I knew he was struggling. He said, "Hey, Pastor Tim, would you be offended if, if I asked you to get me a, a Bible like a third and fourth grade reading level?" So we went out and got him one. And now the guy loves it. He reads it all the time. Comes up to me and thanks me. Um, again, it, it, it's it's the little things that you do, and you see this. And and he's been clean and sober now over a year. He how about, does. How about his brother? His brother um, working on that. <laughs> yeah, working on that. And then you know it's. It is what it is. I mean, uh, how, how did he make the decision to turn his life around? When was enough enough for him? Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'll, let, I'll bring him in one day and let you ask him that question. Um, but uh, he's going to be one of our guys that I've got in our November newsletter that's coming out. Uh, for him, it was just he just was done being tired and 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 feeling almost useless and all that other stuff. And it's just the the drinking. Um, you know, and actually, we're seeing more and more people come into us with alcohol issues. Where it used to be years ago, it wasn't as much. Now we're seeing that more and more than ever. Um, he just got tired of being sick and tired, and mm -hmm. said, "You know, I'm going. I'm going." And uh, you know, uh, to give the story of Billy Sunday, who sat across the street from the Pacific Garden Rescue Mission with two of his friends, and they're sitting there getting drunk. And Billy Sunday played baseball, professional baseball, if you know who Billy Sunday is. And they were across the street from the Pacific Garden Rescue Mission, and he stood up. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going in. And his two buddies made fun of him and laughed at him, and he went in, and his life changed forever. He became one of the greatest evangelists in, back in the early 1900s. And uh, they say if he was alive today, he'd be the Billy Graham, as many people as he spoke to. But he was a drunk. He was a big-time drunk and turned his life around. But his two friends never did. His two friends never got up off the gutter and, and walked in. He did. And seemed like Steve, same thing. He just got up and walked on in and said, I'm done. I'm done being sick and tired. And uh, sometimes that's what it takes it, it, in each individual. And you see that, and you see others not. And, you well, know. Well, what do you do in the case of a Billy Sunday when – uh, or, or your guy who was living behind the Dunkin' Donuts, they walk in that first day and they say, listen, here's my situation, I'm done with it, what can you do for me? Is that, is that basically the conversation, I need help? Yep, that's basically the conversation. And, and then what do you do? What's step one? So step one, they sit down, they fill out, they, they go through the intake, we get all the information on them that we can get from them at the time because that information helps us help them. And then they get into our seven-day uh, program. Uh, that's a guest program for seven days. They, they uh, stay with us and we evaluate them. We make sure there's not any me uh, immediate medical needs because a lot of them, when they come in off the street, there are immediate medical needs because of the neglect of stuff that's been going on for a while. Um, and then we see if they're going to be part of our program because not everybody that comes in is going to be part of our program. If they're going through the DTs, then we send them to detox. Or we send them up to the hospital to get the medical treatments that they need because we're not a medical facility, even though many people think we are. 
<laughs> I tell them I'm the ugliest nurse you ever want to meet. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not a nurse, and I certainly ain't a doctor, uh, and we don't have any on staff. But um, so um, so we do those kind of things, and then seven days if they uh, if they want, if they st- they're still with us and they want to stay with us and they can fit into our program and it works for them and it works for us, they and then enter our program. And then the program, uh, 60 days, if they come in using, they stay with us 60 days, clean and sober, before they can go out and get a job. If they come in clean and sober, they can get a job right away. Uh, the reason why we do 60 days, if you come in using, and I hear this all the time, well, you don't let people work there. <laughs> you know, that's the biggest force, that you, that, that's the biggest lie that, that anybody wants to tell you. No, if you come in and you test positive for drugs, alcohol, we say to you, um, here's the deal. Um, we want you to be clean and sober over to you having a job. Well, you're taking my job away from me. No, you're going to lose your job anyway if you keep doing what you're doing. Um, no, we're telling you clean and sober is our priority, not you having a job. Oh, well, you don't want me to work. No, you'll get a chance to work, but we want you to be clean and sober. And so does your employer, by the way, want you to be clean and sober. I don't know an employer yet that I've met that says, oh, yeah, send all the people that are drunk and high to me and I'll put them to work. Um so we have that misconception and it lies out there people spread about the mission and i said and i and i so they'll come in and they get they get clean sober after 60 days then go out and get a job and many of them do and then there's always a few that say no i'm not going to quit my job and then within probably a week to a month we see them they've lost their job and they come in and go okay i'm ready so it goes back to what you're saying what does it take and then they get clean and sober in 60 days and they're happy because 60 days under your belt, the more you're so clean and sober, the longer you'll last clean and sober and the longer you'll last at a job. Um, sometimes 28 days is not enough. Um, just getting your body, you know, healed and stuff like that and you feel like you're, and you're back out and you get that first paycheck and you're mm-hmm. back using again. So we try to extend that. Um, it's been working. It works very well. I think we got 160-some people full-time jobs already this year. So for those people out there that think we don't let people work, there's 160 people out there working full-time jobs doing very well. Uh, and some are still with us, and some are now back out on their own. So there's a lot we do, again, when it comes to that. It's very important that the clean and sober, that's that's the focus, clean and sober. Tim, I have 60 seconds, a couple of fundraisers for you to uh, get out there for people to donate. Sure. Uh, Thanksgiving's coming up. Uh, we got a lot going on with the meals. If you want to donate, we need a lot of help with our meals in donating. Just go to the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission.com, hit the donate button, 5, 10, 15, whatever you can give, we'll, we'll take and be and be blessed by the Lord. Again, thanks to uh, Mr. Hornby and uh, WRNR here for these tickets. That's a, that's a blessing. Our guys are going to love this. Uh, it's going to be great. Come down and visit. Come down and volunteer. Hit the volunteer button. Come and volunteer. Check us out. And uh, I'm not always there. I'm not always available. (laughs) But if I am, come see me. It's great to see you here, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. As always, you are a whirlwind of energy. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Take the key out of his back now, John. (laughs) He's good. Thank you. Take a breath.